Welcome again to The Ref Show. We kick off with an incident that's only really just come to light uh, as we meet to present this programme. There's enough incident already across the Premier League and Championship weekend. But in what appeared to be a fairly routine game, Manchester United won Brighton nil, in which Neil Swarbrick gave a performance that both you two mm. guys thought was excellent. It appears that Romelu Lukaku uh, was caught twice kicking out <coughs> at a Brighton defender in the groin, in the build-up, the corner build-up that led to Manchester United's winning goal. And it appears that might be looked at. Nobody noticed it, did they? No. Well, uh, nobody made reference to it. Um, but this shows the exposure of the Premier League to the world. And it therefore, does. these players, I don't know why they do it. They've just got to understand that the world is watching them and anybody can report these incidents. And clearly, yes. someone spotted this. Yes. and said, right, let's, uh, let's have a look. The FA looking and it could result in a three-match ban if they decide that's uh, violent conduct yes. off the ball there. Yeah. And, but it, it, it caught everybody on the hop, and not least probably Jose Mourinho that, and uh, Lukaku as well. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, there was no reaction from, uh, from the, the players at all, was there? No, no nothing. It so. appeared not. Um, Neil Swarbrick, a referee that y you have the highest regard for, low profile, you think maybe should get more games. Also, Chris Kavanagh, a newcomer to the Premier League, Newcastle nil, Watford three, and I haven't got any note of any no. controversy. Well, I, th or I, I think that else when I watched Kavanagh's game, and I think that when a referee, a young referee, yeah. uh, onto the list, gets a performance and delivers it, which mm -hmm. he did, showed good movement, good pace, good reading of the game, all the positives, give him another game as soon as possible. Mm. Let's get these guys established so that they can move forward. Well, we look forward to that. And Stuart Atwell has also earned high marks from various panels in here. Well, there was involved in some incidents that have caused some debate over the, over the weekend, despite it being a goalless draw between uh, Swansea uh, and Bournemouth. First of all, well, I think we should really go to the push, first of yeah, all, which yeah, is the most yeah. headline incident, yeah. which hasn't really got a lot of attention and publicity over the weekend. But Swansea's Ki Sung Young, uh, certainly pushed the referee in the back yeah. during a melee in that game and no action was taken. What do you think should have happened? Oh, uh, red card. Let's make no mistake about it that the message to every player at all levels of the game is you cannot manhandle a referee. Mm -hmm. And this, this act, difficult for Stuart to see, ought to have been picked up by his assistants and said, right, it's him. Mm. He might have had some doubt yeah. about who it was. But in reality, the players pushed him quite, quite hard in the back. Uh, was it in an, an attempt? Was it an accident? Get, no, it was an attempt. An accidental attempt. push? Was he, he not no. push, looking he, for an he, opponent there? Well, no, that's not right not, either. That's it. <laughs> you know, he's not allowed to do that. No. So for me, it might seem harsh. It's not harsh. I think this is the one the FA needs to nail. What do you think, Dean? Absolutely agree. You cannot put your hands on a match official, full stop. And, um, you know, we saw examples last year and I was constantly shouted down by people on social media where players had put their hands on match officials. There's one at Sheffield Wednesday uh, that I remember rightly, one mm. at Aston Villa, where, and, and the FA didn't sanction these players strong enough. You know, they were given three, four match bans, you know, Keith's absolutely right. You put your hands on a match official, you're out for a very long yeah. time. You see Stuart Atwell's reaction was confused and startled. I, to be fair, I agree yeah. with Keith. I don't think Stuart yeah. could identify. I, I, I think that was his problem. I don't think he could identify, but that's why but I say... Somebody else could. Well, that's, that's why we pay, yeah. or the league pays for the fourth official, yeah. pays for the assistants. Hmm. At least there should be some clarification, should be some discussion. But for right. me, it was a red card offence. Paul Clement, the Swansea manager, was quite harsh in his criticism of the referee, simply saying, not up to standard. Now, I know various panels here would dis disagree with that, based on his overall standard of performance. But there were incidents in this that were talked about. Let's go to Josh King uh, of Bournemouth going unpunished for a, a flailing elbow on Mesa that cut his forehead, actually. Yeah. Blood clearly there. What? I, I, I couldn't understand why Stewart had missed that one. Mm. And, and I think given the current trend and discussion that's in the game with regard to flailing hands, hands and elbows and the like, uh, it should be eye on his agenda. He missed mm. it, right. uh, which is a pity. But this might be a scenario, having not seen it, not punished it, the FA again, 
might come in and have another look. Mm, that route is open, I suppose. Yes. Uh, Wilfred Boney's uh, goal disallowed uh, for a, a foul off the ball, which uh, most panellists, uh, pundits I've seen over the weekend, have said that well, this was harsh, that goal should have, should have stood. What, what did you guys think, Dean? Well, I mean, they might say it's harsh, but it's a push, and, um, and he's correctly spotted it. And there's been a couple of examples over the weekend where referees have picked up push and contact in the back. So I, I thought Stuart Atwell got it right. And mm. just going back to what Key said earlier about Chris Kavanagh, Stuart Atwell's last Premier League game before this one was five weeks ago. Mm. And I think Paul Clement's comments are more around the perception. You know, he sort of drifted in every now and then into the mm. Premier League. Mm. He should be getting regular games. Chris Kavanagh should be getting regular games. Paul Tierney, regular games. They're losing two referees at the end of the season mm. through uh, retirement. And I've heard a rumour over the weekend there might be a third one going. Where are the next three Premier League referees? Mm. They've got to bed these lads in. Mm. So the support <coughs> for Stuart Atwell. Uh, Keith has had another look at that uh, disallowed goal and he fully supports the mm. referee there. Um, pushing and pulling, you, you, you talked about. Now, Lee Mason, uh, OK, who's uh, maybe got a questionable future. Uh, I know you, you know, if you look across th this show and I, I clock how many times referees uh, come up for adverse comment, and he more than most. But in Burnley nil Arsenal one, which is decided by a late penalty, I think you're going to support him. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, first of all, we've criticised his positioning at times and his pace. He was in a good position, had a good view and had the courage to award the penalty kick spot on. Right. OK. And it's also good to see this kind of offence spotted, isn't it? It, it uh, is. It, it, it is. Not and, always uh, spotted. It is. And uh, Keith's right. You know, he, he, he had a good position, good view, and he was brave enough very late on in the game to award a penalty kick. I just think he should have cautioned the player for me. I, I thought it was a cautionable offence. And if you look at the way that he managed it compared to Paul Tierney in his game, Paul went straight in and issued the yellow card and it, and it sold the decision without right. any issue whatsoever. OK. It's a You're good point. You'll find it strange if uh, diving is not in simulation, if you want to call it that, is not mentioned on this week's show. But it will be in part two because we've got uh, more uh, inst instances of uh, this. One that was uh, notably picked up in the Premier League. And, and we'll talk about the situation generally in the light of the uh, Nias Ban, uh, the Everton player who uh, was caught and charged by the FA and got a suspension, which I know you guys have applauded. Uh, just towards the end of part one, though, uh, Michael Oliver got the biggest game of the weekend. It finished Liverpool 1, Chelsea 1. He got a clean sheet, or did a halsey, as we often refer to on this pro. No yellow cards in a game like that. Take some doing. And I'm quoting there Guy Beale's ref cam report. The next Webb or Clattenburg here, Keith? Oh, I, I, I think that uh, the PGM will... MOL have not got to look too far to get this guy onto the UEFA Elite panel. Give him the bigger games because he's delivering now. I think he's come on this season against last. I think uh, there's a little more, if you like, civility about his performance, less arrogant. I think he understands he's got to work a bit harder. Uh, he's gaining maturity, handling players much better. Um, and really, it's his decision-making accuracy that's getting him these big games. Yeah, more so, of them. And to, to come through with that a, a card in a highly charged game, as it usually is between Liverpool and Chelsea, I speaks mean, volumes. Well, I it? mean, we'll, we'll, you know, we we criticise players for simulation and other bits, but actually, when you look at some of these big games more recently, Man U, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, they don't have the no. intensity and ill discipline they used to have. So mm. credit to the players as well in that yeah. game. Yeah. yeah, right, good point. Uh, Mike Dean came through without c controversy, I think, this time. Crystal Palace 2, Stoke 1, a late winner from Sacco uh, there. We've got a, another instance of simulation we'll talk about. We'll put them all together in part two. This came in the, the West Ham Leicester game. Uh, Andre Ayew diving in, apparently in an attempt to win a penalty. Referee not conned by it, but there was no action and retrospective maybe should come in. Um, Spurs won West Brom won. Uh, this was Mike Jones in the middle. Uh, a point for occasional ref show panellist Gary Megson yeah. in charge Great. of West Brom. Great. Give yeah. him the job. Well, why not? I mean, uh, we, we listen to him here on this panel. He talks a, lot of, a great deal of sense. He's got a huge amount of experience. He can certainly manage players. Yeah. Uh, he's in charge when he's the manager. And so I think that uh, if he's in the frame and he gets the job, good luck to him.
Absolutely. Um, we don't know. As, as, as you watch this, you might know that he's been upgraded at West Brom or that he's available. And if he's available, tell you what, that, uh, that result has mm. advertised him on the scale. I've also got a whole sheet here of a uh, championship incident over the weekend to discuss in part two, including a goalkeeper who's, who borrows a cap from a supporter oh, yeah. in a, a local derby. And it also includes a Norwich City fan who steps up as a mash official during their game at Carrow Road. Yeah. I mean, what's all that about? It's lovely that. I remember Jimmy Hill years ago came out of the crowd, didn't he? Came yeah. out of the studio, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. to do a yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. All with these guys, Dima Harab and Keith Hackett, do rejoin us for that. See you in a bit.